All right, we're going to take a look at analog sensors today. I got a couple of programs already written up that I'm going to show you uh, utilizing analog sensors. Now, for our test bed, our two analog sensors are the potentiometer, which is like a dial. We put that uh, small drive shaft in there and just the gear on it so that we can turn it to uh, actuate it. Uh, it has a range of values. It's uh, 0 to, I believe it's 4,095. I have that plugged into analog 1. And then the other one is our, our line follower or our light sensor. And it has a range of values, again, 0 to 4,095. And it measures differences in lightness and darkness. And I have that plugged into analog 2. Now, it's always a good idea to check out where your motors and sensors are plugged in at. When I had you make your template in Robot C, uh, I had you put uh, your touch sensors. I had you put the push button in Digital 1. I had you put the trigger in Digital 2. Uh, analog, potentiometer, analog 1, line follower, analog 2. Now, I had someone run their program earlier and everything looked good. We couldn't figure out why the motor wasn't going. We had them start the right motor. It wasn't going. It wasn't going. Couldn't figure it out. Well, turns out they had push button plugged into analog one. So if you don't have your sensors in the right place, your program's just not going to work. It's not going to communicate. Everything has to be in place to work correctly. Now going back to Robot C here, this is a potentiometer program. And I've had to make no changes in how my test bed is set up. Uh, what I did do was I changed my task description. In my task description, I'm, I, I said, turn a dial to increase value. Turn the right motor on at full speed. Turn a dial to decrease value and then stop the right motor. So as we increase the reading of the potentiometer, the reading of the potentiometer changes when we turn it like a dial, it's going to turn the motor on. The motor is going to stay on until we just decrease the speed. Now in my pseudocode, I put until potentiometer is greater than 2,000. So that's about a mid-range value for my potentiometer values. I have the motor start at full speed. And then once my potentiometer value is less than 2,000, I have it stop the motor. So let me scroll down so that we can look at what the code is going to be. Now this looks like a lot of code, but really the only thing we're looking at is these four lines. All I did after those four lines was I copied and pasted them over and over again so I could repeat the program. Because if I, if I do everything just once and the program's done, I have to turn my cortex off, turn it back on, and start again. So these are the only four lines that I wrote. And this comes over from natural language. And the first line is an until statement. And you have two until potentiometer statements. You have until potentiometer greater than, and you have until potentiometer less than. Then I was using, uh, from movement, I was using start motor and stop motor. So I had to use uh, start motor to get the motor actuated and stop motor to stop it. Just like before, when you write this program, you compile it, look for your red X's, and then you're ready to do your firmware download and your download to robot. Now something I want to remind everybody of, and I don't really need to do it at this point, but people are kind of missing it. In your robot drop down menu, you always need to check to make sure that you are uh, have it set at VEX 2.0 Cortex and Natural Language PLTW. Always check that or your text functions over here on the left are not going to appear the way they need to appear to be. So let's hook this up and try our potentiometer program. And possibly we may need to troubleshoot if it's not doing what we're looking for. So I have my double-sided USB cord, and I plug that in. I got my flashing lights, and then I'm going to turn things off. Okay. Right away my motor's running because 
it has an old program on that. So if you plug this in and your motor's running, don't worry about it. Just let it go. Let's see if uh, when we go to firmware download if that goes away. Firmware download. You hear the motor running. It's running again. And now we're erasing that. The reason that was happening was that was my old line follower program. And I don't have anything over my line follower. So it was running the line follower program because it hadn't been erased. Once I did a firmware download, it erased that program and it's cleared out of there. Now we're going to go download to robot. And we give it a moment to do that. And then we're going to go to start. Now, you hear it's running already because my potentiometer value is already set up. So if I turn it, the motor stops. Let's go ahead and unplug this and see if we got this working. So if I turn this this way, when it gets over 2000, it turns on. And it's going to keep going until I turn it back off. Turn it on. Over 2000. Under 2000. Over 2000. Under 2000. So the potentiometer is a great sensor to use uh, if you're doing a program and you need to, to measure something in increments before the motor is actuated. Uh, one example that I've used the potentiometer on before is when I did a mock-up of an elevator and had to read each floor of the elevator through potentiometer readings. Okay, let's look at my light sensor program. So I'm going to go back to robot C here. Get X out of that. And I have one that's called line follower. Line follower or light sensor. This is going to be very similar to the potentiometer. The task description is motor will start full speed when light is greater than 2000. So when it has light, it's going to start at full speed. And then when it is dark, the motor is going to stop. Very similar program except instead of using the Intel potentiometer, I'm using Intel Dark and Intel Light. I'm using the same robot motions, uh, not robot motion, movement, uh, start motor and stop motor. And I copied and pasted this a few times so that I could re repeat the program. So uh, it says Intel Dark, you'll start the motor, Intel Light, stop the motor. So uh, if I cover it up, it should start the motor. Let's see uh, if we got this set up correct. So we're going to go back to our test bed. Uh, I'm going to turn off my Cortex before I plug it into the computer. And then I'll plug that into the computer and turn my Cortex back on. Now I'll go to my program. I'll do the firmware download to clear that out. Again, we want to start with a fresh Cortex. Give it a moment to do that. So it's erasing out the uh, potentiometer program that I just had on there. And then I'll be ready to download to robot. And it's always a good idea to do the firmware downloads. Sometimes I've skipped that in the past and didn't have problems, but technology's not always consistent. So I try and make a practice to do it every time. Download to robot. Very quick step. Once it shows up, you click on Start. Okay, so I have it set up so that it's, it stops when I cover the sensor. So here's, here's my line follower. I take my finger off. Let's see what's wrong here. All right, let's unplug this. Let's turn off our Cortex to restart the program. Let's turn it back on. Now I should be able to cover. So until dark, stop motor. Until light, go. Stop. Go. And uh, you can use these sensors to actually get the motor to follow along. Uh, if you had, like, say, a piece of tape on the ground and you had these sensors on the bottom of a mock-up vehicle, it could actually follow the line of that vehicle. It takes uh, multiple of motors 
and a multiple of sensors. Let's look at this program one more time. We'll X out of that. So, uh, based upon our values, motor starts and then it stops. So I'd like you to try both of these programs. This gets you acquainted with analog sensors, the potentiometer, which measures a range of values uh, based upon where the dial is, and the line follower, which follows a range of lightness to darkness. Uh, again, I want to remind you, when you're editing your programs, if you've saved something and you're opening it back up, make sure you check your platforms, VEX 2.0, Natural Language, PLTW. Uh, if you save something and exited out of it, it tends to want to default back to a different setting. So always make sure these are set up for you as well. Well, I hope you've had good luck so far. Uh, I hope you have the same experience with the analog sensors. And until next time, good luck.